Hey everyone, so for this video, we are going to be doing something I don't normally do on a lot of my Mish Technique paintings, unless it needs it. So this is in the uh, second stage of underpainting. So this is now the yellow glaze. I am doing the white over top of the yellow. And of course, normally the next step would just be the blue. So instead, I am going in at this stage and I'm laying in some darker shadow colors. So this is all gonna be silvery white armor. And so when I put the blue glaze on, I want the, the edges of that armor to have a particular color. And because, you know, you just get used to thinking of colors and layers and glazes, if I put in a really nice indigo here now, and I put that blue, that really pale blue glaze over top of this, that color is gonna be real close to exactly what I need for the finished product. So I'm kind of going in and doing a little bit of shadow here and there, um, on the armor to build that up and build that color that I want at the end of the day. I'm also going to put in um, the indigo into uh, the kind of background area because this is space. And so the nice thing about painting space um, is that, of course, you know, black is never just black. Black has, all, you know, it's nicer in a painting when black has multiple layers of colors in it. And it just looks darker that way somehow and more richer. And uh, because it's space, you know, I want it to have an inky depth rather than just flat black. So um, by putting in the indigo now, when that blue glaze goes over it, I'm going to then be able to kind of keep glazing different colors into that. And it's going to be really cool. So, you know, putting in the indigo, then building back, uh, you know, some of this um, nebula uh, cloud zone uh, will then, like I said, just give it that depth um, that I want that, that uh, you know, kind of baked into it rather than something that, uh, you know, I need to kind of create um, once I'm doing color. So uh, let's dive in and I'll show you what I mean. So I've already done some of it here and um, you know so this is not a flat thing it's rounded right and so there's some things that are right forward to us and then some things we're kind of looking off to the side so I've just kind of got the darkest parts of it not only that are in the shadow but that are going to be um, off off on the side so we're looking at an edge in the armor and just, you know, with a really nice, here, nice brush, I am um, applying a rather dark glaze. So it's not just, it's not like I'm painting like a full, um, chroma right I'm still almost glazing here you can kind of see because I don't I don't want it to look like I just took some you know black marker <laughs> and um drew drew this on here that's not the that's not what we're going for we're going for something that is still very painterly that still f will fit in um, and right now, of course, it does kind of stick out weird because the blue and the yellow are so opposite. And it's making, you know, it's just really, it really stands out at this stage. But you'll see when I, I want it to, you know, because I want it to stand out so that when I put the blue glaze onto it, it'll really harmonize and it'll just give this the three-dimensional feel that I am after. And I'm using blue in this case. I often do this with sepia. Uh, and I'm using indigo in this particular case because this is, as I said in the intro video, is um, armor. And I want that silvery color. Uh, 
uh, not only, you know, not only in the main part, but also in, in the uh, edges. So you kind of, if you do this, um, it's my recommendation that you use something, use a color that kind of makes sense with what you're doing in your final image. You don't have to. I mean, I could have very easily used sepia and it would have been fine. It just would have given it like when you put the blue glaze on that blue is very opalescent and the blue over brown is very purple. Right. But the blue over this is, um, you know, going to have a more um, like almost like a gunmetal gray color. And that's really what we're looking for. OK. That's good there. I'm going to do a little bit on here. So I'm just looking at my reference off camera. And there's highlights here and kind of some shadows here now. Um, and we're looking at this pretty straight on, but that means there's going to be some shadows in along here. So I'm going to just add that edge in here. And I still, I'll see once I'm done with this part uh, I'll see once I'm done with this part and and the background if I want to go whole hog and just do kind of local shadow as well because that does that does a thing and it is very nice and what I mean by local shadows is you see how like right here, because the light's coming from here, basically, this is shadow and this is a lovely shadow um, and as a midtone. And once the blue is on here, I put a shadow, you know, I glaze the shadow over it. It's done very easy. However, what a nice little trick is, is that I do that blue glaze here now and I just keep this as a midtone uh, and that really yields lovely results as well so um, I might do that I'm still debating on it so we'll see and with certain types of things it really um, it really yields some very lovely results as I was saying Okay. There we go. That's a little intense, but I think it'll be okay. Okay. That's very much in the light, so we don't need too much of it. It's a very small edge, small edge. Let's go do a couple of these. It's a small, glazy edge. So what I'm trying to do is just have different different intensities of that blue. Again, I'm still really, you know, I'm not just direct painting, I'm glazing here. But just trying to set myself up for success later.
right, I'm just gonna fill in this top part here. You know, and because this is going to be part of, um, it's a multi-step process, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I do want it pretty thick though, but it doesn't have to be uh, without texture. Texture's just gonna kind of add a nice element to it. I'm just gonna kind of get this top part here since this canvas is really visible there. I'm gonna kind of go in a little bit here. Build some of that out. And get some more paint. But I even like the texture because even if it's like, you know, this is trying to be space, right? So even if it's space, um, again, I kind of, this is nebulous space. So that means it's just, it's got more movement. It's got more, um, it's just got more going on. And that extra little bit of texture helps, uh, you know, just helps kind of locate your eye uh, in a nice way and adds depth and interest to something that would otherwise be, you know, uh, kind of just a boring part of the piece. So, do a little more. There. Okay, just kind of gonna go into this right here. And so once this is dry, I'm gonna go back See, I hadn't done the white in the nebula part yet. And so once this is dry, I'm gonna go back in and do um, the last bit of the white. And then I can kind of clean up anything I might still need to clean up at the bottom that um, where I was working on the uh, armor. So this is a fun way. I paint space all the time. <laughs> um, sometimes it's deep space, sometimes it's nebula, sometimes, you know, there's different different elements of space, of galaxies, all sorts of stuff. So I really love painting space. So I have to say it's definitely one of the things I do. And so I think over the years, um, just kind of figured, at least for me, what works. Okay, so I'm not going to take this giant brush right up against all of that detail work. <laughs> just going to get some of this in here. And come back up here. This, this is really all going to be nebula, but this kind of... Um, dark tone will be real real nice in the glazing process because then I can glaze purples and magentas and turquoises just right over top of this and it's just going to add such beautiful depth uh, into the final image so okay let me just get this little spot and then I'm going to switch brush to something a little finer so I don't make a mess out of my edges here. And then we're also going to do that there. So switched my brush. Where, so it's one of these things where I can still kind of do the floofy circular motion <laughs> that I need. But it's also going to allow me to get into these edges here.
So I can go back and kind of clean some of this up again once I do the white, but at least it's pretty good. And then I just say, you know, even at this stage, you never want a sharp edge, especially from your foreground image to the background because uh, there is nothing that will make your image more cartoony than something like that. Okay, so it's nice to have a bit of a fuzzy edge. Your eyes don't see, your eyes don't see that way, right? If you just take a look across the room, focus in on something, and then notice that your peripheral vision is in fact extremely blurry. It's not that you can't see, you know, whatever your um, prescription <laughs> may or may not be has nothing to do with uh, what your peripheral vision looks like. Um, but all of our peripheral visions blur out. So it's just kind of a nice technique and a real simple, easy way to up the ante on your images. <coughs> is to um, is to just blur blur the edge a little bit between everything. Okay, so I'm actually coming in with a much finer brush. And if I'm using like a super fine brush like this, it's going to naturally be a really sharp edge, right? And so what I'm going to do in a minute is go back in with a slightly fuzzy brush, a dry fuzzy brush, and make sure that there are no hard edges in here. It's really worth it. And even if you are, you know, if your style is more uh, illustrative or cartoony, even just that little thing will really make a difference. Uh, so just try it and see what you think. So even in my reference, there's a real um, dark shadow right here. That's convenient. Um, her glasses are, of course, in great shadow, but I am not going to do that, I think, with this. Um, I'm going to glaze that on later. Okay, just filling this in here and then. I got my fuzzy brush. Okay. So I have a bunch of brushes that, you know, like once they're, here we go. Once their utility as a fine brush has uh, died, they're still useful. So this kind of nice fuzzy texture is great for this stuff. So you just kind of go along the edge. Without doing too much, you just paint into it. There you go. That's mostly hair anyway. Okay. Wonderful. Same thing here. It's going to go a little deeper. Okay. 
perfect. So we're just gonna let this dry and it will um, really come together once I finish the last bit of the white and then put the blue glaze on.